now trigger the next clip in track two. Stop track one, and then trigger another clip in track two. The last thing I'm going to add to this DJ controller during this tutorial is a way to manipulate the resonance of the filters. I'm going to use the multi slider. This is like a fader, but you can have more than one in each object. In fact, this time, instead of using one six slider multi slider, which is what I'd normally do, I'm going to use six one slider multi sliders. This is because I'm going to use their physics modes to create a special spring function which allows me to save their resonances independently. And each one needs to have a different resonance saved, so they need to be independent sliders this time. I need two for each track, one for the high pass filter and one for the low pass filter. We'll call them HPQ and LPQ respectively. Checking the label box means that their name will be displayed at the bottom. You have to be careful with high resonances, because if you boost a very low cutoff frequency, you can end up making a very loud, powerful sound which can uh, damage speakers and hurt people's ears. So I'm going to give these resonance sliders a function which lets them quickly drop back to zero. If I click on the behavior tab, I can give it a physics mode, which means it acts a bit like a spring. It'll always drop back to a value which I can select in this height box. I'll tell it to drop down to zero. Changing this tension parameter alters how quickly it'll drop back. I don't want the resonance to always drop down to zero when I let go of the lemur. Sometimes I want to be able to select a resonance and let it stay there. So I'm going to add a custom button which allows me to switch this functionality on and off. This button gives out a value of zero when it's not been pressed and a value of one when it's active. So in the height box for each slider, I can multiply the slider's current value by the value given out by the custom button. When the custom button is off, zero, then our height will be zero. When it's on, or one, the height will be the current value of the slider. This button's going to be called stick, so let's set that up. In the height box, I need to type in the name of the slider, hpq1. HPQ1.x is the variable. And multiply this by the parameter given out by my stick button. Stick.x. Let's test it out. Normally the resonance slider drops back to zero when I let go. But if I activate the stick button, it'll stay at that value until I press the stick button again. Let's set this up for each of the other sliders. So change HPQ1 to LPQ1, and then do the same for tracks two and three. Let's just double check that I've activated physics for each one. And then I can go and assign a control number to each before mapping them to the resonances in live. MIDI mapping mode, and we assign them to the resonances in EQ8. The final 
task is to choose suitable minimum and maximum values for these resonances. Then we'll have fully functional resonant filters for our DJ performance. Let's give them a spin. Here are our low pass and high pass filters. But if I increase the appropriate slider, I get a really nice resonant filter sweep. I can do this for the low pass and for the high pass simultaneously. And when I drop all the frequencies back in, I can turn the stick function off so the resonances drop back to zero. In this tutorial, I've built a really simple DJ control system with a mixer, filters for each track, and also control over the resonances of those filters and a clip navigation system. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how the Lima allows you to take DJ control to the next level, adding an extensive effects section. 